Good morning guys and welcome again back to my channel. So today we are going to do a day in the life of my second grader. This is Arilyn and she's seven years old and we are going to show you our Monday morning routine. So the reason why I'm letting you know it's Monday morning is because each day we do something slightly different. So maybe I'll do every day this week. I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, the first thing I wanna do this morning is I still haven't had breakfast. I just finished my morning routine and I recorded my morning routine video for you guys. And so now I wanna get her started on her solo work while my son is working on his so that I can eat my breakfast and she's still being productive. So the first thing we're gonna do is gather her new spelling words for the week. So I usually do four or five spelling words for the week and we gather those from her language arts curriculum which is the Good and the Beautiful level two. Now, we are a little bit behind on the spelling words because we're behind on homeschool period. We had a really long break after Thanksgiving. Uh, we ended up getting COVID. We ended up taking off most of, I'm gonna say like, yeah, most of November and all of December off. And then they just got over another cold. So they had two more days off. So we're pretty behind this homeschool year. So we're reviewing, I'm going through all of the units, spelling words, she's on unit three. So we're gonna go through the units of the words that she already learned, but has forgotten that those are the words we're picking up on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the words that we were working on last week. She got a few words on Friday. So Mondays we get our new spelling list and then the first thing she has to do for spelling is make uh, sentences for each spelling word. And so on Friday, which is the last day, she gets a little spelling quiz. Going back to the words that we spell go. Good job, can you spell Ina? We continued going through her spelling word list for unit one until we found five words that she was struggling with. And then those became her spelling words for the week. Now I am writing all of her spelling words at the top of her notebook so that while I am making my breakfast, she can start writing her sentences for these words. Okay, so we have moved over to my living room, my family room, because my son is working on his solo work. So I have ended a video on how to homeschool different ages. So right now he's doing his solo work for an hour, and then we're gonna do work for an hour and see how much we can get done. First, we're gonna pray, okay? You wanna pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for this day. What we're gonna do for Bible is we're working on my brother's keeper right now. We're doing learning to love your siblings God's way because, because my children are having a hard time getting along right now at this stage of life. The second thing we do is this mommy and me devotional. 100 daily devotion devos for moms and their little girls. While Arilyn gets her Bible, I'm just gonna show you the inside of my brother's keeper. Um, it has, it's run by day and it has a lesson. It has a Bible verse and then some questions to discuss. And then she just has to normally draw a picture or write something down here. And then it's just like a little simple activity. Just two pages and then the mommy me devotional you have a, a topic which is actually perfect even though this is not the one we're doing today it has a bible verse at the top and then there's like a little lesson and then there's other bible verses here um some very bright ideas which are quotes and then a prayer and there is also a section i think i skipped it Oh, here it is, a timely tip for moms, little tips for moms as well. So this is what we're gonna do during our Bible time. All right, have you and your siblings ever gotten into a fight? Like what? Like an argument? Yeah. Of course you have. Living in the same Every day <laughs> with any other person. She couldn't find her Bible, so I was teaching her how to use the Bible on the Bible app. ourselves of the story we're going to go to the jesus storybook bible and we're just going to read it from here and then we're going to finish the lesson on envy and what it means to feel jealous doing bible one-on-one -on -one with each child 
helps us to really get intimate in our conversations and talk about things that are bothering them individually. Uh, she finished her Bible. So I have a planner here that I typed up for Ireland, but I have everything listed here that we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna cross off our Bible study. And with her language arts, it's the one that she tends to dislike the most. So what I like to do is break it up into little sections so that she can just do a little bit and then we do something fun and stuff like that. So last week on Friday, we read The Ugly Duckling Part 1. We already finished our sentences and spelling words because we already finished the phonics card so we use the good and the beautiful i was gonna grab the camera we use the good and the beautiful level two and now we're gonna do some geography today because they add geography into their lessons so today she just has to label the countries in europe and we're going to talk about hans christian anderson because he wrote the ugly duckling and um then for language arts, she also has to answer some questions about the beginning, middle, and ending of the story. And then she's going to create her own Ugly Duckly, Duckling audiobook today, which would be very cool. But what we're going to, so I'll, when I get to that, we'll talk about it. And then where she has independent practice. So language arts is usually pretty long, so we're going to, she also has this. We already did spelling, so we're not going to do that. Um, she has to do the order of events and then read a nonfiction article and write the information. So because it becomes so long, we are going to throw in science in the middle of that because she's excited about her science. But first, my dear, we are going to label the countries in Italy. Okay. So we're going to find and label the country where the writer of the ugly duckling Hans Christian Andersen lived and he lived in Denmark. And we're going to also label other countries in Europe, okay? And this helps, Ireland, because, you know, your sister is in high school, right? In, pub yeah. in public high school. And in her geography classes, she's the only one who knows where all these countries are. And she learned this when she was in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and third grade, and second grade like you. This is why it's important to know different things, okay? What you going to put P G um, L. Because you have a P L for a P for Poland that that works out. Okay, good. Okay, so where does the story take place? What is the setting of the Ugly Duckling? So the setting is where the story takes place, where it's happening. Okay, what characters and problems are introduced? What? Okay, so right now I'm gonna help her by writing what she said to me in the middle here of this chart. And then she's going to do the audiobook portion where she's going to reiterate it as an audiobook. But first, she needs a little snack. So, Alan's going to go get a snack in the kitchen. And we're going to take a little break so she can eat and get some energy and then continue on with the language arts. Okay, so after Ireland records her audiobook, she's going to do part of her independent practice. And we're going to move on to science before we continue with the back page of this language arts. I don't like her to feel overwhelmed and I don't want her to hate any subject, so we need to take breaks. Birds. Birds are a large group of animals. children sometimes things get a little out of order than what you have planned so Ireland did a little bit of the next page of her language arts and before the other thing because all oh, my messages are going crazy because um, I had to help my son study his states so now she's going to do her audiobook and then we're jumping into science once upon a time there was a mother duck who had four eggs and one looked different from the rest. Okay, so Arlen is done with language arts. So here we have science set up. We have one station here. I wonder what this is. Another one here. I wonder what that I is. Do this one first. And then we have something over here. 
Okay, the way that I do science is, so I teach science at Ireland's Homeschool Co-op. And what I do is I just gather, well, I'm teaching science through the Genesis creation story in the Bible, how God created everything in order. And now in our science class, we are up to birds. And so what I do is I read the Bible verse, Ireland the Bible verse says, Genesis 1.20 says, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds, creatures. let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So last week we talked about ocean animals and we talked about animal classification. And this week we're talking about birds. So she just watched a video called All About Birds on the free school channel on YouTube. And now she's gonna do a project. And what I like to do is I like to do this on Monday with Arlen because it helps me to see if there's anything I need to change for my class on Tuesday, the next day, which is tomorrow. Okay. So these represent bird beaks, okay? So you oh, have a so pipette. Like how they like pick up like. You have a pipette. You have tweezers, chopsticks, and you have a spoon with holes in it. These represent four different types of bird beaks. Okay. All of the utensils on the table represented bird beaks and all of the different items represented the types of things that some birds eat. So she, used the different types of beaks to try to figure out which beak belonged to which food and which beak belonged to each bird. Okay, so the next thing Alan's gonna do is watch a video about ducks because we wanna know how do ducks stay dry and then we're gonna do a little experiment to figure out how ducks stay dry. So all you need is a printout. I made this on Canva. You can use a paintbrush or these sponge brushes and you can use baby oil. I'm supposed to use baby oil, but I don't have enough for my science class, so we're gonna test out vegetable oil and see if that if that still works. Okay, Arlen, you gonna watch the video first? The experiment was to see how the feather soaks up water if it's not coated with oil because water birds have oil glands that help repel water. So we finished science and now the kids are just experimenting with oil and water it's together. Kind of so Aaron is almost done his independent work. So I'm gonna have Aralyn. I think the last thing she has to do is math. So I'm gonna double check that now. So yeah, the last two things is actually song school Spanish. She's gonna do a little song school Spanish. She just has to listen to it. Um, we're gonna review the vocabulary words and then she's going to do math. And then I have a little book to read to her. We can do that whenever. And we have a read out loud that we read together uh, with my son, and that's Narnia. So right now she's playing with the water. I'm going to set up the song school Spanish and math so that when Aaron is done, we can do Narnia together. Look at this, it has a big oil circle. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, oil and water don't mix. So she's right. gonna look at a video about why oil and water don't mix because she was curious about it. So we're gonna take a little walk over to our lake and we're gonna see if we find any other duck feathers laying around that I can use for my science class tomorrow. This is one of the main reasons why I love homeschooling because for science we get to come outside and actually look for feathers. Even if we don't find any, we have some more birds. There's ducks over there. We saw lipkins and they are, there's white ibis over there. And so I have this app called Seek and it can identify plants and birds and insects, all kinds of things like that. So that's how we know what kind of birds we have in the neighborhood. Otherwise we wouldn't know. Look at how that bird's using his beak, Arlen. To get the fish, it's a pointy beak. It's like the tweezers for catching insects, the white one. Okay, I have to correct myself. That is an egret, a snowy egret. So look at it. It's hunting for, for insects and fish in the water. Arlen, look how it uses its beak. And then over here you have ducks. You got it? Alright, cool. See if we get any more. Can you help me up? 
Thanks for coming up. Thank you. These are apple snails. There's a piece of that inside. We found the snowy egret feather, probably. I assume that's what it would be. Got there. Look at this. It's a half bitten shell. Oh, wow. I just took it because it's pretty cool. You excited? You going to go rinse those out? Yeah. Let's go rinse them out. You gotta let me in with her. <laughs> Girls, your beauty doesn't come from hairstyles, jewelry, or clothing, but from what is inside your heart. The unfading beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit, which is priceless in God's sight. This is ours in the shell collection. Smaller. Oh, cute. Wait, she's been collecting these for a little bit of time now. <laughs> Very cute. And then this I love it. And then it gets I love it. Very cool. Well, Marilyn, 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 would you like for me to read while you guys play with the water? Suit and the cabbie's bowler hat were as much part of them as their own fur and feathers. Oh, Adash is going to be a little line. Oh, like a line middle. like that? Smuts and underscore. So I'll quite a bit sniffling Uncle Andrew all over. Raise his head and said, So I have to go pick up my oldest daughter from school right now. And so Aralyn's last lesson is math. So my son, he is going to teach her her math lesson while I go pick up my daughter. You make sure you be a good student for your brother. Pay attention, okay? Okay. And that you'll be, I think after this, we're just going to do song school Spanish, which is fun and fast. And daddy's in the room working if you need him, okay? Okay. I love you. I'll be right back. You too. So Aralyn is starting Song School Spanish book two. I wanted to review book one with her because we did it when she was like five. She doesn't remember, but I can't find the CD. So we're just going to go on to group two. Book two. And chapter one is welcome. So for the first day, um, we're just learning the new vocabulary words. So I just went over what these words were with her. And then I want her to listen to this song three times and try to sing along with it while... I finish up with her brother, and then she is done school for today. Great job today, sweetheart. I'm so very proud of you. <laughs> All right, so here is your book, and here is your mama's little radio. So this one is the play button, okay? Yeah, yeah I, I see. So you'll listen to it on your own. I'm going to close the door, okay? Hola, amigos. Hello, friends. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, there you go. A full day in the life of a second grader homeschool. That's how it is for my little girl. Every day is a, a lot different. <laughs> Sometimes just a little different. So I'll try to do different days like this for you so you can see like our poetry days, our, our history days, and our stuff like that. But um, for now, this is basically the flow of our day in this new school year in the second semester. Um, I will be making a full day in the life video soon as well as one following my sixth grader. So if you guys are just interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, I have reviews on almost all of the curriculum that you saw here today. So and thank you for, for watching. I am tired. <laughs> thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.